Hi, I'm Ann Poole. Welcome to Creating a Google Calendar. This is the first in my series of videos that will show you one way that a small library with limited resources can help make ebooks available to its community. We'll create a calendar that shows our church members when ebooks we've selected will be available free or at very low cost, and we'll add that calendar to our library website. In this series of videos, you'll learn how to create a calendar and add ebook promotions to it. Then add the calendar to your library website. You can do this with other tools as well, but I've chosen to use Google Calendar. It's free to use and easy to set up. If you followed my previous series of videos on adding features to your library website, you're familiar with the idea of using Blogger to create your website. Since Google also owns Blogger, the two go together naturally. Also, if you're using something else for your website, Google Calendar works great with other website platforms as well. You can skip this step if you already have a Google account, but if not, you'll need to create one first. Go to the address shown on the slide in the bottom left-hand corner. You'll need to fill in everything on the right side of the page. Google accounts are designed for individuals, so some of the entries won't make a lot of sense for your library, and you'll need to do the best you can filling them out. Pick a name and a username for your library, and just put something in for your birthday and gender. Use your real email address and phone number so you can get the password reset if you ever need to. You can change those in the future when someone else takes over your job. After you fill in the information and click the Next button, Google will try to get you to create a profile. Just click Next or Continue over the next couple of screens to bypass that, at least for now. Now you have a Google account, but finding Google Calendar can be surprisingly a little tricky. The easiest way is to go to the Google home page, then look for the little tic-tac-toe symbol in the upper right corner of the page. Those are your apps, and Google considers the calendar to be an app. Never mind that you're probably not even on a tablet or a smartphone while you do this. Anyway, click the button that's also in the upper right corner if you're not already signed in. Once you're signed in, you can rearrange your apps to put the ones you use most at the top. I like to keep Maps, Calendar, and Drive in the top row because I use them the most. Now we're going to create a new calendar. If you really wanted to, you could skip this step and simply start adding events. They'll go on your default calendar and work just fine on your website or wherever you want to show them. However, since this Google account belongs to your whole library and you may want to start publicizing different kinds of events in the future, it's a good habit to create a new calendar for each major category of events. That way you can either display one category at a time or combine them. We'll create a calendar for the ebook promotions we want to tell our members about. To do this, start by clicking on the down arrow next to My Calendars, and then click Create New Calendar. This is the screen you'll see after you click on Create New Calendar. Give the calendar a name and description. You can leave the location blank and leave the time zone as it is if it's correct. The most important thing on this page is to check the Make This Calendar Public box. Otherwise, people won't be able to see the events you've created when you put the calendar on your website. When you're done, click the Create Calendar button. You'll get a warning about making your calendar public. You do want to do this, so click Yes. Now that you've created a calendar, the next step is to find some ebook promotions to publicize on it. We'll take a little detour and I'll show you one way to do that in Part 2, Finding Ebook Promotions.